Let us start with the second theory. The second theory that is Darwin's theory of natural selection. Darwin was inspired by a publication of Malthus. The scientist's name was Malthus and his publication which uh, Darwin read and got inspired with was Essay on Population. And Darwin proposed various postulates in support of, uh, as a part of this uh, theory of natural selection. Let us take these postulates. The first postulate says that population increase. Whenever a population increases, it is always geometric. So population increase. is geometric. Two examples that we can take here, one is of paramecia. Paramecia reproduce every 24 hours. Reproduce every 24 hours. That means if the conditions are optimum, then they will reproduce at this rate. Similar thing we know for bacteria. Bacteria reproduce every 20 minutes. And again, the condition has to be optimum. If they are allowed or if they reproduce at such a rate, within few months or few years, their number is going to get in millions. But all of these uh, organisms which are produced, they do not survive. But if this rate continues, within 2 to 5 years, the entire earth would get covered with only paramecia or only with bacteria. So, the point which he said was that population increase is always geometric. The second point is that the food and space, the food resource and space available for these organisms is limited. And the food quantity or the food resource, it grows at or uh, by arithmetic manner. So food growth or food increase is arithmetic. Now what exactly we mean by this geometric and arithmetic? Geometric, suppose we just take an example to understand it, is going to be 2 into 2 into 2 and so on. So if we write 2 then 2 into 2 into 2. So this becomes 2 into 2, 4. 4 into 2, 8. 8 into 2, 16. But in case of arithmetic, it would be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So it is 2 plus 2, 4 plus 6 plus 8. So the number of organisms, they increase at a faster rate. And this expression is known as geometric expression. Whereas the food resource increases by the arithmetic manner. So food is going to be always limited and that is why though they can reproduce at such a high rate, the availability of food and space, it becomes a constraint and that is why their number is kept under check. The third postulate is there is struggle for existence. Now, number is more food is limited. So they are going to struggle for the food and space. So there will be struggle for existence. And this struggle can be classified into three categories. It can be intra specific. That means between the members or organisms of the same species. It could be inter specific between the two or many different species and third it could be environmental 
That means they are struggling with certain environmental issues. Now, intraspecific means the members within a species. This interaction or this competition or struggle could be for a piece of meat. Like we know that uh, the tigers or lions, the male, that is the lion would feed first. Then it is going to be the female, that is the lionesses. And then the cubs join. So there is a competition for food between the members of the same species. Interspecific is normally for predation. So if one organism feeds on the other organism of other species, then that would be considered as interspecific. And environmental issues it could be temperature, rain, humidity, any factor which uh, is uh, required for their existence and they need to struggle according to that environmental condition. The next postulate that is the fourth one. Now when we talk of a population there are variations which are found. So there are variations in a population and these variations they can be of two categories continuous and discontinuous. Continuous variations are slow and they are caused due to recombination. So they are slow and due to recombination. Whereas the discontinuous ones are sudden and they are caused due to mutation. So in a population there are these kind of variations also taking place. The fifth, so there is struggle also, there are variations also. Now, there is survival of the fittest. So that is called the natural selection. Natural selection and survival of the fittest. This point or this postulate means that the nature selects the most fit one or in other words we can say the fittest is going to survive and why would it survive because the nature has selected it and why has the nature selected it because it is the fittest one to survive in those changed conditions that means when the food becomes limited it can struggle and survive the variations are such that those variations are also uh, most suitable in that condition. So nature selects and the uh, fittest survives. Sixth point. Now, those characteristic features or those variations which are the most suited, they are inherited. So inheritance of useful variations and as we know the variations are genetic and if they are useful then they get inherited from one generation to the next generation and when these variations they get inherited and they go on accumulating for many generations the new organism or a new species is formed so that is speciation so these are the seven postulates which were put forth by Darwin and the theory says or the theory title is theory of natural selection. So the word itself tells us that those organisms survive which are selected by the nature and the nature selects the fittest one. And how is the fittest picked up? There is struggle for food, there is struggle for space, there is struggle between the members of different species struggle between the members of the same species and with the abiotic conditions also. There are certain variations, the genetic changes which take place. The best variation and with all these struggles, whichever organism survives will be selected by the nature. And as nature has selected it, it means it has all those useful characters which get inherited and we are getting new species. So these seven postulates are of Darwin 
and then we will take up principles of uh, natural selection little later which were given by Mayer so that will be taken up later on after this we will take up the third theory that is theory of mutation.